For this section, there's really just one more step than what you have with the adding polynomials and kind of do it like the one and three, kind of do it the slower way. There is a shortcut that can work, but it's a little bit dangerous to try to do unless you really know what you're doing. But, um, so what I would encourage you to do is this, at least till you get really comfortable with it, is I'm going to say distribute the negative slash the subtraction. If you go back a long time ago and talked about subtraction, they probably taught you that subtraction is really the same as adding a negative. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, well, if I have this minus sign like right here, if I could distribute that, I could look at that as though it's plus a negative. Well, I want to distribute that negative, and then it just becomes a plus problem. So distribute the negative or subtraction to each term. then combine like addition. In other words, I'm going to put like a 10, 6 in there. So then do the exact same thing you were just doing in the last section. And if you see that, that's really kind of the goal, is that, well, if I have this minus sign here, um, a lot of times people, they look at this minus sign, they say, oh, it's minus 6x to the third, which is true. But it's also going to be this minus this, and this minus that, that you're subtracting this whole thing after it because of the parentheses. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. So what you could do is you could take and look at that. Let me grab a different color. It's a little bit bright. You could view it as though, really, this is a distributive problem. It's kind of like you have a negative 1 times this, that this subtraction problem is really the same as that first polynomial plus negative 1 times the second polynomial. And when you do that, you have to take that negative 1 and apply it to all the terms, all the little clumps in that second number, for lack of a better term, that second polynomial. Fair enough? So when you do it, you can just copy down the first one, so 13x to the third. We don't need the parentheses if it's addition. We talked about that yesterday. So 13x to the third plus 11x minus 11. And now when I do negative 1 times a positive 6x to the third, that gives me minus 6, x to the third. You agree? Negative 1 times a positive 6 gives me negative 6. And then I have a negative 1 times a negative 9x, which is nine yep, just positive or plus 9x. And then my negative 1 has to get multiplied minus by my two. positive 2 for a minus 2. And when you look at that, other than being two different colors, it's the exact same thing as what you were doing in the last homework assignment. That we said, all right, once we're there, I have, well, this many x to the thirds. I have 13 x to the thirds minus 6 x to the thirds for a total of? Um, negative 7 x to the thirds. Nice job, Sam. So 7 x to the thirds. 13 minus 6 gives me 7. And then I could pick a different color. If I have this many x to the first, so positive 10 plus 9 more gives me 19 x. And then last but not least, I have negative 11, minus negative 2, minus 13. You okay with those? So that last part is really just the same as section 6. Um, so if you have that, you're good. Um, we're going to come back to that in example 3, but want to kind of change directions and then come back to reverse it. If you have an additive inverse, additive inverse, I don't know if you want to write this, but basically, have you guys studied additive inverses? Basically, what it's saying is, what can you add? So write it, don't write it, totally up to you. What can you add to a number to get 0? That's really what an additive inverse is. It's what number can you add to what you have to just make it drop out and give you a 0? Um, and later on, geometry will get multiplicative inverses and that type of thing too. But if I were to have the number, I'm just going to go off on the side, maybe skip it, but 5 plus what equals 0? Negative 5. 5 plus negative 5 equals 0, right? Mm -hmm. So 5 and negative 5 are going to be additive inverses. Or if I were to have a negative 2 thirds plus what gives me 0? 2 thirds, right? Because if I start out negative 2 thirds on my number line, if I add 2 thirds, I go 2 thirds to the right, and I get right to 0. Um, so additive inverses are really going to be the, this is probably not proper math, but the same number, but one is positive and the other is negative. negative. 
So if I have, now going to this problem, 5x to the fourth, what can I add to 5x to the fourth to give me zero? Negative. Negative 5x to the fourth. Agreed? Mm -hmm. So I'd have 5x to the fourth plus negative 5x to the fourth, or just 5 minus 5, I get zero. And that next chunk where I have my plus 2x to the third, I need to write a? Negative 2x to the third. Nice. Negative 2x to the third. And then I have a minus x, so I need to write a? Yep, plus x or plus 1x. Preferably without the 1, I suppose, then it's simplified. And last but not least, I have a plus 9, so I need to write minus, minus 9. And that there would be the additive inverse of the first number. Example 2. Questions on example 2? Nope. All right, tried to give you time to forget example 1, and we'll jump back to the same exact thing. Um, Feel free to kind of do it on your own if you want to and look up, but I'm just going to kind of talk my way through it and maybe try to go a little bit slow. When we have that negative or that minus sign, that's the same as saying a negative 1. So essentially we're going to distribute that negative 1 to all four parts. And what that does is it just changes the sign, the positive negative of each of those. So I'll recopy my first one down. So x squared minus 8x plus 4. Because that's in front of the minus sign, it doesn't, the minus won't affect that at all. And then I could say, well, negative 1 times the 3x to the third gives me a minus. So my positive 3x to the third becomes a negative. My negative 1 times the positive 9 gives me minus 9, the x squared. Negative 1 times negative 5x plus 5x. Negative 1 times negative 2 plus 2. And once we're there, it's the last section all over again. We just combine like terms. So this one I try to throw a little bit of a curveball at you because a lot of people, they look at the x squared and say, oh, what goes with that? But I gave you one number that has a higher power. So we need to start with the minus 3x to the third. That's my only x to the third, so I can't combine it with anything. Once I'm done with the x to the thirds, I go to my x squared. So I have it in two places. And at the beginning right here, there's no number in front, so we know it is a positive. 1, a positive 1. So then we'd have a negative 8x squared. So because 1 minus 9 gives me a negative 8. Then if we were to switch to this. So uh, x to the first. I have negative 8 of them plus 5 of them. Negative 3. So negative 3x. Then last but not least... Plus 4, plus 2 gives me a plus 6. I do like, I usually don't do all the colors when I'm working by myself, but I do like kind of underlining things as I use them, just because it's real easy to miss one. So you may want to consider, or if you find you're getting some of them wrong, you may want to consider doing like the little brackets underneath. It also helps you see, helps me see that this minus goes with this number. Sometimes people make mistakes, they look at the sign after a number, not the sign before it. Good? So number four. The really good math people, maybe keep watching. Um, this, yeah, you're all really good math people. Um, here's, here's kind of the slacker way that can work. Um, it's definitely faster, but if you're going to try it this way, check your answers as you go. So if you find you're making mistakes, you catch it right away. Don't practice the wrong thing 14 times. But really the point is we need to take everything in here and combine it with all of these. We have to make sure we subtract them. So if you don't want to bother going through the whole distributing the negative, you could just look at it this way. I have 13x to the thirds. I need to subtract 6x to the thirds. That gives me how many? 7x to the thirds then the answer will just be the exact same as number one. But if you look at it, it kind of spoils having to think through it. But I have 10x. I need to subtract a negative 9x. When I subtract a negative, that's adding. So I get 10x plus 9x for a total of 19x. And then last but not least, I have a negative 11 minus a positive 2. So negative 11 minus 2 is negative 13. Because my minus the positive means I go more negative, just subtracting two. So if you can go through and do it that way, do it, you know, or at least maybe practice it some. But 
push comes to shove until you get comfortable with it. If you want to go and like distribute this negative like we're doing here, um, that's more the surefire way. But if you can learn it this way, it'll make life a little bit easier for you going on. But, but this is why this works. So.